Since the 7th century, this mountain in central China has been a pilgrimage destination. On this mountain, located in a dense forest, is a unique imperial palace. The old story of the palace takes place against the background of a thousand-year-old religion. According to legend, in the time of the Western Zhou Dynasty, around 2,500 years ago, the crown prince of the Jing Le state, meaning land of purity and pleasure, came here to practice Taoism. And after 42 years, he became immortal. This has been the dream of Taoists ever since. On this mountain, there are still clues to the origin of the Taoist culture. The Chinese people's understanding of and respect for nature come from Taoism. The oldest Chinese character for Tao depicts a person walking along a road. The wise sage Lao Tzu gave the word Tao a whole new meaning. Lao Tzu believed that the Tao is like the mother and source of the world. It is independent and intangible. It never stops and never changes. It is the natural law governing changes in everything. To follow nature is to respect the essence of the Tao and to achieve a perfect and harmonious state. Belief in the Tao gradually developed into a religion called Taoism. Taoism, a religion that originated from China along with Buddhism and Confucianism, has influenced the Chinese people for thousands of years. places sacred to Taoism are still in use today. Mount Wudang is the most famous imperial Taoist site. The mountain has a splendid history. As the most highly regarded mountain in Taoism, it is called the Immortal Mountain. Mount Wudang is in the northern part of Hubei province. The crown prince of the state of Jingle, who according to legend became an immortal here, was known as Xuan Wu the Great. The Wu in Wudang refers to him. This mountain 
is home to the largest and oldest Taoist building complex. Mount Wudang is the most revered of all the famous Taoist mountains. Building these huge palaces and temples on these steep mountains was no easy task. The large-scale construction on Wudang Mountain began from a well-known historical event. Zhu Yuanzhang, the first emperor of the Ming dynasty, died in the year 1398. He was replaced on the throne by Zhu Yuanwen, his grandson. Zhu Yuanwen decided to consolidate his power by attacking Zhu Di, who had the strongest army in the region. However, when Zhu Di learned of Zhu Yuanwen's plans in the year 1402, he conquered the capital city of Nanjing and declared himself Emperor Yongle. After Emperor Yongle occupied Nanjing, Zhu Yunwen disappeared in a palace fire. His fate is still a mystery to this day. This famous historical event was the War of Purification. Zhu Di was now the emperor, but he was worried. This was because he had committed a serious violation of feudal ethics. After considering for a long time how to resolve this problem, he remembered an important historical figure. That figure was Xuan Wu, the crown prince of the state of Jingle, also known as Xuan Wu the Great. After becoming an immortal on Mount Wudang, Xuan Wu became an important figure in Taoism as the Guardian of the North. According to Taoism, North is associated with water, so Xuan Wu is also known as the God of water. People who hoped for a good harvest viewed Xuan Wu as the most respected god. During the Song Dynasty, however, Song Emperor Zhao Hung changed Xuan Wu's name to Jian Wu to avoid using the character Xuan in his grandfather Zhao Xuanlang's name. The worship of Jian Wu was popular with both royalty and ordinary people. As he was extremely important to Zhu Di, the emperor had big plans for the mountain that was associated with him. Mount Wudang is both sacred and magnificent. The nearby mountains all seem to be turned towards its highest peak, Sky Pillar Peak. The scene resembles the moon surrounded by stars. This scene is known as 72 mountains worshipping the tallest peak. Because of its shape, Mount Wudang is also known as Flame Mountain. There's an old saying that goes, when water is above fire, the world is in harmony. According to Taoism, for there to be harmony in the world, fire and water must be balanced. 
The idea of the god of water guarding Flame Mountain reflects the ancient people's desire for peace. Ten years after taking the throne, Jul Di issued a decree saying that Jen Wu the Great ordered him to raise an army in Beijing. In response, he promised Jen Wu that he would carry out his orders and asked for his blessing. To thank him for his kindness, Zhu Di promised Jen Wu that he would build more palaces and temples on Mount Wudang. To do this, Zhu Di collected food and taxes from the six southern provinces. He then ordered Guo Jing, the Minister of Construction, to lead 300,000 people to work on Wudang Mountain. The huge complex that resulted was designed as described in the story of Xuan Wu. This is the beautiful Dangjiang Ko Reservoir. Under the water here lies submerged a large complex of Taoist buildings. In the Ming Dynasty, the complex was called Juanzhou. This painting shows how magnificent the palace complex once was. The buildings were constructed in memory of Jen Wu the Great. There are 500 rooms and they cover nearly 1 million square meters. The palace was called Jing Le Palace because Jen Wu the Great was formerly the crown prince of Jing Le State. Jing Le Palace complex was finished in the year 1418, five years after construction began. The crown prince of Jing Le was not tempted by wealth and power. Instead, he practiced Taoism on Mount Wudang, hoping to become an immortal. This is one of the most beautiful scenic spots on Mount Wudang. It's known as South Rock. Viewing South Rock from a distance, a complex of buildings seem to be seamlessly embedded in the boulder taking advantage of the cliffs. The Tianyi Jianqing Stone Palace is located on these treacherous cliffs. The stone palace with its elegantly carved stones was designed to imitate wood construction. This structure truly is one of a kind. The size of the stone palace was determined by cracks in the cliff, making it in perfect harmony with its surroundings. It is a perfect illustration of Taoist doctrine, which emphasizes respect for nature.
Opposite South Rock stands Flying Flag Peak, which resembles a flying flag. It is flanked on one side by the Thunder God's Cave and on the other with Pang Lai Mountain God. There is a lake in front. Mountains behind and water in front like this is known in Taoism as avoiding yin and embracing yang, making it a perfect location. The site is in fact ranked ninth among the 72 sacred Taoist sites. Purple Heaven Palace is located here. Purple Heaven Palace is one of the best preserved palaces. It's also one of the most important of the Wudang buildings because of its associations with the emperors. Purple Heaven Palace lies at the foot of Flying Flag Peak. It has three terraces of different levels extending from its front. On the ceiling of the palace are many splendid paintings. The palace is supported by 36 huge cedar pillars. These represent the 36 stars guarding Jenwu the Great. The Divine Path is a 70 kilometer long stone road that begins from Junzhou. Along its sides are 33 Taoist buildings covering a total of 1.6 million square meters. This long path of stone steps symbolizes the spiritual journey of the Crown Prince. After 42 years devoted to self-cultivation, the Crown Prince finally became immortal. This complex of buildings strictly follows the order of man, earth and heaven in Taoism. It represents the road leading from the ancient earthly city of Junzhou to the heavenly world of the immortals. The locations of the temples and palaces on the mountain were carefully selected and perfectly proportioned to be in line with the basic Taoist principles. Zhu Di further ordered that the mountaintop buildings be strict copies of those in the Forbidden City. Golden Shrine, for example, is a copy of Tai He Palace in the Forbidden City. It features characteristics restricted to imperial use, such as double eaves and gold plating.
Building this colossal complex of buildings on the mountaintop must have been a huge undertaking. This building used over 3,600 cast copper tenon joint pieces, requiring 300 tons of pure copper. After casting, the copper pieces had to be carried up the mountain, and there they were joined together to make the gold-plated palace. These parts were perfectly joined with no visible seams. Even on windy days, the flame of a burning candle doesn't flicker at all. In the year 1419, the emperor ordered the construction of other buildings around Golden Shrine to begin. Following the Taoist doctrine of staying in harmony with nature, the buildings followed the contour of the mountains. The man-made walls and natural mountain slopes were perfectly integrated. The stones and rocks used in the construction of the walls were all custom-made. Doing so ensured that the gravitational force was concentrated in the center, allowing the heavy walls to stand intact for hundreds of years. The Golden Shrine is said to be the heavenly palace and Emperor Jianwu's residence in the human realm. Naturally, this is where Jianwu the Great is worshipped. But there was a problem. No one alive knew what Jianwu looked like. In the year 1416, Zhu Di ordered a sculpture of Jianwu the Great to be built, but all the works submitted to the emperor were rejected. As the start of construction approached, many artisans were in exile or in jail. Tai Chi Tolai. However, eventually, an artist named Ji realized that the emperor wanted his own image to be used for the sculpture of Jianwu. And so, in the end, the gold-plated copper statue of 10 tons in weight with the face of Zhu Di was made, and it was placed in the Golden Shrine on top of Mount Wudang. People began saying, Jen Wu has the face of Zhu Di. Zhu Di had turned Wudang Mountain into an imperial temple in honor of Emperor Jen Wu. By doing so, Zhu Di successfully created a political regime in which divine rights are granted by the gods. Hidden in the burning incense was the desire for power. The long and peaceful reign of the Ming Dynasty is reflected here in these religious buildings.
Jordi recruited highly respected Taoists to serve in the temple on Mount Wudang. In return, he granted them high social class and privileges. Wudang became the center of Taoist activities in China for the rest of the Ming Dynasty. The status of Mount Wudang to the imperial family was very unusual. Every new emperor sent officials to Wudang Mountain to worship Jianwu the Great. The Taoist concept of being tranquil and detached and desiring to be immortal influenced how both ordinary people and the imperial family looked at life. Emperor Zhu Hotong completely abandoned Zhu Di's practice of strengthening political rule through religion and devoted himself completely to Taoism itself. Zhu Hotong avoided political matters for 20 years. He turned them over instead to his eunuchs so he could fully devote his time to Taoist cultivation and the invention of longevity pills. However, in 1566, 130 years after the construction of the Wudang building complex, Zhu Hotong died from toxins in his own longevity pills. The emperor's negligence had led to political corruption. When things were really bad, peasant rebellions erupted. In 1642, Li Zicheng conquered Junzhou and burned down the residence of the eunuch's guards on Wudang Mountain. From then on, the buildings on Mount Wudang were no longer under the control of the central government. The former glory of the imperial palaces and temples was eventually buried by history. The two centuries when Taoism thrived on Wudang Mountain witnessed the rapid development of Taoist culture. It left for the world a splendid cultural heritage. Taoism is an important part of the Oriental philosophy. It represents the wisdom of ancient Chinese. <laughs>